Hosanna. We do it together. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the Son of David. Got to wave the palm. Hosanna to the Son of David. One more. Hosanna to the Son of David. Amen. That feels better. And we may have a seat. Let's make sure. Let me just be here. We'll make sure that everybody gets palm branches, Brenda, right? Yeah. yeah. You cannot use the palm branch as a seat. You have to leave space for people next to you. They're a good group of people here today. Ushers, if we run out of seats, you got you know where the chairs are. Okay. Good morning. Morning. This morning's first lesson is from the book of Psalms, number 118, verses 1, 1 to 2 and 22 to 26. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them, and give thanks to the Lord. The stone that builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, we pray. Give us success. Blessed is thee who comes to the name of the Lord. We bless you from the Lord, house of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What's next? We'll continue with the song of praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Wait a minute. I, I don't think you can sing. This is no, the day the Lord has made while you're sitting down. No. All sand. There. A little different beat. This is the day.
second reading. Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our second reading for this morning is in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Have this in mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and become, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. de la carta a los filipenses capítulo 2 la actitud de ustedes debe ser como la de Cristo Jesús quien siendo por naturaleza Dios no consideró el ser igual a Dios como algo a que aferrarse por el contrario se rebajó voluntariamente tomando la naturaleza de siervo y haciéndose semejante a los seres humanos y al manifestarse como hombre se humilló a sí mismo y se hizo obediente hasta la muerte, y muerte de cruz. Por eso Dios lo exaltó hasta lo sumo, y le otorgó el nombre que está sobre todo nombre, para que ante el nombre de Jesús se doble toda rodilla en el cielo, y en la tierra, y debajo de la tierra, y toda lengua confiese que Jesucristo es el Señor, para la gloria de Dios Padre. Esta es palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. And now we're going to ask our choir. Whoever is here from the choir, Brenda, to come forward, and we're going to sing one, a very quick song, but you can all sing it with us. Right on, King Jesus. Come on up. Whoever feels that they have the spirit power to sing this song. Oh, you're already here. You're already up here. Look at this. That's it, Elmer. We need you here. Take time. Help her up. Yeah. Now this song starts right in. It doesn't delay at all. Ah, it's very high too, right? Very high. You all know this song? Ride on, King Jesus? Rock and roll version. Here it goes.
ask the kids to come forward so they can walk out of here. Because they have gifts for us. Wait a minute, where's that basket? No one can hinder me. There we go, Westcott Walker. Look at, oh man, did you make that? Well, your mommy made it. Did you make these? Your mommy? Your grandma? Mommy. Mommy did good back there. Okay. All right. We're, let's see these. Now, on Friday, there were some kids here for First Communion, and they made these. Did you make this? Did any of you make one of these? Would you like one? You would like one? Take one. Take one along with you, even if you got a new one. These were made by children for children. Were they made by children? Were they made? Do you already have one? They're good to eat? No, no, they're not good to eat. No. So I want you to do one thing for me before you go. You want one? Sorry. Take an extra one. These, somehow these got in the heat. They're a little bit uh, shriveled. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to take mine, and we're going to go, and then we're, you have to do some activity now. You're going to lay it, push it up in the air like this, wave it in the air like this. Not put the, there, that, wave the whole thing. Wave this. There, that's good. In the, well, two hands, very good. Then you're going you're gonna to shout out as loud as you can humanly shout out, Hosanna to the Son of David. So, but not now, not on the count of three. <laughs> and then you're going to throw these in the air and remember which one is yours. Okay. <laughs> no time for initials. One, two, three. Hosanna! Let it go. Let it go. One, two, three. Hosanna. Say Hosanna. Now throw it. There you go. Very nice. Okay. Pick them up. You're like the kids back in Jerusalem when Jesus came into town many years ago. Now you can follow the leader, Miss Corlito, and you can walk back there to Sunday school because they're going to have a nice lesson for you today. Full lesson. Or you could stay here if you feel old. Don't break the camera. Hello? All right. So, in the holy and precious name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our friend, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, it's always gladdens my heart to see those kids up here, doesn't it? Because when I see the children here and know that we still have that Sunday school and the, the teachers are working very hard to make this a good Sunday school, uh, it, it says to me, we're not afraid to pass down what we believe. We're not afraid to tell our own kids and our own grandkids and our own relatives and friends what it is that we believe and that we believe this matters 2,000 years later. So I came across something in the online resource this week and it, and it triggered my brain. Judy will remember this, nobody else I don't think who's here, but we went to the Holy Land. It was many years ago. It was still holy then and apparently it's holy now. And we, we got there and we went on all these tours and what was, what's some of the things that stood out, it all stands out, it all stays in your memory forever if you ever go over there. It just stays with you, you don't lose it. And one thing was how close everything was there at the end of Jesus' life. You know, you have the, there, there were mountain, mountain, mountain. You had Mount, the Mount of Olives, where Jesus ascended into heaven. You had the hill far away, which is Golgotha, which is a little garbage dumpy hill outside of Jerusalem and then you have Mount Zion. Jerusalem is on the top of a mountain. So it's hill, hill, hill. 
And when you get to Jerusalem, you see how close everything is. It wasn't that it was like a suburb. They're not in Riverhead. It's not 50 miles away. Everything is within like six blocks of the city wall. To sit, uh, New York City blocks. Not the long ones, the regular ones. And, and when you see that, that, there's the Mount of Olives, and you're sitting on, your, your tour bus drops you there. And then you go to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is directly below the Mount of Olives. And then you see a bunch of graves. Why are those graves there? They're there because the early believers said that Jesus, well, what did Jesus say when he left? He said, I'm coming back the same way I left. So they believe that resurrection day, they'll be the first ones up uh, at the end of the world. Because they, be, they can't be more than a couple hundred yards from where Jesus left. And then you have the walls of the east gate of Jerusalem. Okay. So you, and that's where Jesus came in on what day? Today. Palm Sunday. Jesus came in through that gate. That was the gate of entrance. So, when you do that, when you go there, what do you find? You find people, because Jesus' good friends lived there, uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. They lived right there in uh, Bethany, which was in the same area. So now think of it as Cypress Hills. It's all here. It's all one after the other. And when you get to this hill and, and, and you get toward the middle of the hill, all of a sudden there are people there with, what do they have? A donkey. They have donkeys. And they will say to you, they will say this wonderful word to you, for $50 you can take a picture here with this donkey just the way Jesus rode the donkey 2,000 years ago. Yes, for $50, you can have a picture with the donkey. For $150, you can get on the donkey. <laughs> yes, this is true. And you can ride toward the gate of Jerusalem. All about the money, bro. It's all about the money. We went to Egypt, and we, they said, you need to get on a camel here at the pyramids. And then they took you around the corner and said, if you want to get off that camel, you're going to have to pay me another $100. So it's all about the money. And you, but, but would you pay? I might take at least a photo, right? 50 bucks, I got a photo of me next to the donkey that Jesus rode in on. Maybe not. Uh, Listen to the text from the Bible, though. It says Jesus did not buy a donkey, did he? He borrowed one. He borrowed that burrow. He borrowed a burrow to go into the city of Jerusalem. And really, if, if you think about this, think about it this morning on this special day, Jesus' life was lived so much differently from our lives. We're all about accumulation. We're all about property values. We're all about having the right ride and the right, uh, 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 the right tax bracket. And we need all those things. Spend a lot of st time on things. Jesus came into the world. How did Jesus come into the world? Came into the world in a rented room and there was no room in the rented area so Jesus came into the world in a borrowed stable. Borrowed from what? Apparently a donkey. Yeah. Came into the world in a borrowed manger that usually belonged to the donkey in that place. When Jesus grew older, what did he say? Well, what, what, did, what happened to him? What was his hometown as a kid? A place called Nazareth, right? Jesus got kicked out of Nazareth. He got kicked out to such a level that they thought they, they were going to kill him. They were going to throw him over a cliff. And he departed in no peace at all and later on said what? The foxes have holes in the ground and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He lived on the blessing and comfort of friends in borrowed spaces for almost his entire adult life when he started his ministry. You know, and, and it would say when he visited Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, he just stayed with them. 
He didn't pay any uh, innkeeper. He didn't have any of that stuff. He didn't do any of those things. And so he borrows the donkey. And on Thursday night of this week, he borrows a room. And he has the Last Supper there. Not his headquarters. He didn't have headquarters. Borrows a room. Good Friday, he carries a borrowed cross. Not one that he owned, not one that he made. One that someone else put together on his behalf to kill him. And on Easter Sunday, where did they bury him? In a borrowed tomb. He didn't own a grave. He didn't have a grave site. He had none of that stuff. When they had to relieve him of his clothes after he was dead, they <laughs> he had nothing. They stripped the cloth off of him and divided it up and gave it away. And, and, and uh, gambled it away, basically. So think these thoughts today that your Lord, your Savior, the guy who comes in into this, this city of Jerusalem as king for a day, man. You ever been king for a day? You ever had a day that's your best day? Queen for a day, we'll say. Queen or king for a day. You ever had that day that's the best day ever and nobody can take it from you? And, 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 and you were on the top of the world on that day. Remember that day? I've had a few of them. You know, if you make the game winning shot, baby, you are, you're the king for that day. Joe, winning, game winning base hit, right? You remember it? Of course. I remember all those things. Uh, and then think about this. Think of the worst day of your life. And I think some of us, well, all of us here would have some really terrible days. But they might be worse and worse and worse for each of us than the other one could think. Because that's the human life. It's the changes and chances of life. And some of those days are the biggest blessing you could imagine. And some of those days you feel like God is way off somewhere else and couldn't possibly find you. Well, Jesus enters Jerusalem as king for a day and by Friday they're putting a borrowed crown of thorns on his head so that you would know and I, I, I pray that you know this today that whatever the changes and chances of your life you know amen where, wherever you find yourself today after that great loss that you can't get past after that great change that you didn't want to happen or on that great day of celebration when the whole family is together and you're party, partying all the way to three in the morning. Elmer. <laughs> I, had to, I had to ring that up. I had to do that. Uh, whatever it is, the party day, the funeral day, the terrible day, the day when uh, you got online and you stayed online for five hours to make some simple transaction because someone in a Someone in another part of the world didn't understand a word you were saying. All of those days put together are the days that Jesus lived. Right? Jesus lived these kind of days the same as you and me. So that, when he went to that cross, so that, when he, when he went onto that tree, borrowed from, made from somebody else so that the government could put him to death, you might know that that was done for you. That cross is for you. You know? To, to put it in Brooklyn or in New York City terms, Jesus always knew a guy. Right? Jesus had a guy. You know what that, you know what that is? That's, this is us. That's New York. Hey, I got a guy. He can get you a donkey. You guys, go to the guy. Get the donkey. We'll be good. <laughs> and, and what did the disciples do? Hey, he knows a guy. You know? And when it came to the room on, on Holy Thursday, I got a guy, he's got a room. Find a room, we can use that room. Jesus had a guy because people were drawn to him and he, he, he said, you know what, I have friends. I have people. I got folks. He was the king of the universe, but he was like you and me. Do you need a guy? I know when I've needed a guy, I didn't always have a guy. You're always going to have Jesus. Jesus is the guy. He's the guy when you run out of guys. 
He's the one when you run out of people. He's the one who can open your heart and crack it open and stay there with you through thick and thin. That's the one we have, the friend who is Jesus. And no one, no one can take that away from you. So you lift those palm branches this morning, folks. We lift them high and we say, King Jesus, we're with you all the way. By Good Friday, all the rest of the people who had those palm branches had burned them up and said, no more, crucify him. As you walk that walk with him this week and with us, just keep it all in mind. Jesus went through all of it, all of it, all of it for you, with you, on your behalf, for your future, and for your eternal destiny so that you might trust in the promise of Jesus forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Congratulations, please stand. We affirm our Christian faith by reciting the Nicene Creed on page 5 and also on the bullet, and also on the screen. We begin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for us salvation came down from heaven, and was the Father. Said to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge for the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one that sits for mission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead. Please take a seat. Hey, this is a really nice looking site for me. This, is this a good looking site for you? Yes. Yeah. It's wonderful to be with all of you today and to understand the depth of God's love for us. Somebody calling me. Okay. Tough luck. I'm in announcement phase now. Uh, and to know that God's with you all the way. We'll have a refreshments after church today, of course, in the parish hall. You may take the palm branches home. Uh, a lot of people make them into crosses, such as this one. Michelle, thank you. Well done. And uh, some of you also just uh, keep them on, a, on the door post or whatever. And then we just keep them there as a sign that Jesus did come uh, as the king of our hearts. Uh, and then next year we, we burn the palm branches Sunday before uh, Ash Wednesday, just before Ash Wednesday. So keep it all with you. A lot, of, a lot of guests, a lot of wonderful people here today, right? Are we happy? Yes. Hello, hello there uh, uh, to the entire family that is here from Florida to Bushwick to the Bronx to wherever. Uh, and to uh, just inside the city line. Uh, and, and I want to say that to the Preston and extended family. So who do we have from the Preston extended family today? We have Carolyn and Liston Gillette. Yes. Cookie and Liston. And uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. And God's richest blessings to you and the girls and, and, and Liston Jr. and all of the rest down in Florida. And next to you is a woman whose name I believe is Valerie. Yeah. Did I get that right? And this is a good friend of Brenda. Best friend of Brenda. And they grew up at a church right here in Bushwick. Uh, St. Paul Lutheran in Bushwick. Where they came, where all came up. And then they came around the turn and got to Cypress Hills. See, that's the way it goes. And then she moved to, to, to Queens, as many do, 
and then to the Bronx, which nobody does. So, <laughs> Let's not say it that way. No, the wonderful people in the Bronx. It's a wonderful place to be. <laughs> but, but somebody, but no Mets fan would ever do that. I say that much. Uh, okay. Uh, who, and we have others here who are our family members today. Way in the back, I see other folks here who are, and Mike, Mike Sanceron and Sarah are here today for Major League Baseball. Opening day is Thursday. As we all know. Uh, all right, who else am I missing? Alvin and Diana. We did not mention Alvin and Diana last week. They're right back there in row five. <laughs> Wonderful to see you. Who's that? Thomas. Thomas? <laughs> yeah. There he is, Thomas. Welcome. Bro, he was here last week as well. He also was here last week. She, there's some, there are people are keeping pointing. I see Star, man. Star is here. I'm seeing stars. Star. Yo, bro. This is one of my all-time mechanical all-stars. Man who can fix any problem you have in your car. For free. No, no. I didn't see that. Clara? And Sam, oh, the Frankies are here from, uh, and uh, one of their, one of the favorite things is their teacher from that school is teaching Sunday school today. So welcome, Frankies. Right down on Highland Place. Happy Palm Sunday. Blessings in Jesus' name. Okay. That's intros. And I see other family members from other families back there too. So, so we just keep it all in the house. It's us. Uh, other announcements. Well, you know the, the schedule's laid out there before you. Uh, Thursday, everything's going to 7.30 rather than 7. And the real reason is it takes a half an hour to find a parking spot around here. Today was horrible. Horrible. Uh, we, nobody, oh, no sense complaining. But nobody pays attention to the no parking in front of the church signs. Nobody. What happens to them when they die? <laughs> They're going to have some explaining to do. That's all I'm going to say. Leave those spots alone. Anyway, thanks for that. So it's 7.30 Thursday. We have the blessing of the oils, a healing service, and then Holy Communion. And on Friday, you can go to St. Paul Bushwick, where there is a three-hour service. Uh, Pastor Chanderdot will be there uh, for that one. And then at 3 o'clock, he'll be over here for our Holy Communion here. And at 7.30, Pastor Pinedo will be here for the Stations of the Cross. I'll be here for some of that. Uh, I have this thing on my head, so I have to get the stitches out on Fri Good Friday. That feels ominous somehow, but the, the Good Friday, the stitches come out of my head. This is, it's okay, everything's fine, but it was a skin cancer situation, so it's better, but it still needs help. Uh, then Easter Sunday. Hey, this is all weather permitting now, right? What's next Sunday supposed to be like? Rain. Rain? You keep track of the seven day? Yeah. Judy said the same thing. So if it's raining, we just hear. We're not putting people out. Yesterday, were you outside yesterday? Skip it. That was a harsh day. So. If it's anything like that next Sunday, we're not going over to Highland Park. We will, we will uh, we'll wave at it from here. And then that's at 7, 8.30, it's a breakfast one. And then at uh, 9.45, Holy Communion with all the bells and whistles on. All the, the one word we can't sing right now, we're going to sing it a lot next Sunday. And then uh, Easter brunch afterward. People, have, have people signed up for that? I do. I do. Are you getting married? What are we doing? <laughs> some, oh, okay. So, so you have, there are some people who have signed up, but more people need to sign up. Okay, thank you. I know you've, you've enlisted those the, that we can count on for sure. So more people could sign up for that. And uh, what else? The flowers.
There's a sign-up sheet for flowers in the back. You can find uh, Brenda right after church. So the other thing is that I have, I went, I'm uh, part-time at uh, St. John the Evangelist now in Williamsburg. And they have a nice thing they do where they take some photos and then during the week they'll send out those photos as a sign that the church is alive and well. And we haven't done that really, have we? Do we need to do that? Yes, we do. We need to show people that there are people and that we are people and that we're here. So we're going to take a few more photos and try to get out a regular send out about what we're up to. Uh, Rachel is here today and she had mentioned something to me that's of importance to a lot of you here. And that is a lot of people here have not taken care of their end of life issues. Uh, wills, uh, a basic will, a basic understanding of what you want to happen with your material goods, which we said are not what makes our life go, but you have them. And, you have, and it's, it's, it's a wise thing to take care of those things. So think about that. Uh, Rachel is willing to bring, uh, to organize a way for people to be here to help develop wills and thoughts about your estate. Okay? You may, you, you, you may use those, that, that conversation. It's, it's pretty simple, right, Rach? I mean, they can set, you can set up a will right here. And then there, there may be people you need to follow up, but a lot of people don't take care of this. And some of you have properties, you have stuff that you've kept on for all your life. This is, a, this is not, we're not fooling around with this. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to deal with that in a, in a meaningful way, okay? And, and if you know people that need that assistance, let, let me know or let uh, Rachel know as well. Because some people can't even get out anymore, and they still need that. And then in the spring, we're going to get back outside. We're going to do our thing. We're going to have activities in the neighborhood. We're going to reconnect to our neighborhood. We need to reconnect to Cypress Hills in East New York, where we, we still have our tent here. I think we need to get somebody to give us some parking spaces, for one thing. Uh, and then there are people here who can help young adults uh, with jobs, with positions, with next steps in life. And after church again, we can introduce you to that, those people and get that process starting. Church has to be here for all of the things that church needs and that the community needs and that the world needs. Healthy employment, good futures. A lot of our kids here, as you know, are all, these are all the best students in New York City, in our minds. Uh, <laughs> but we want the best for them. We want the best for you when you get out of school, that you have a place to find a home, you know, get a, get a next step. So that's today's announcements. I kind of went on a little longer because I preached this short sermon. Should I introduce this? There's a young lady sitting over to the left of me here. <laughs> this is Faith Hernandez. Faith, stand up, take a hand of applause. Faith, did you see? Recent graduate of, I don't want to say NYU, no, Pace? Pace, yeah. Pace University. And she is training to be our tech person here. We need a techie. We think she is that person. It's a degree in marketing and in outreach, so she has a lot of skills that she's going to bring to us here at our church. You may know her mom and dad, Jackie Hernandez, yes, and Sam. That's, that's the family. Oh, my. A lot of prayers. Let's go to prayer. Anyway, welcome, Faith. Online prayers. Virginia Antonetti. Everybody's wishing a Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Margarita Ramos for her cousin in Coney Island who lost their mother on March 17th. That's from Margarita over in New Jersey. Healing for Iris Ramkissoon. Guidance for the for the Sansaran, Mohabir, and Juner families. Uh, as I said, Simone's going to try and come back after Easter. She's working it out. Happy birthday to Kelly Mohabir, Sharon Kassoon, and Kevin Pearson. Okay. And then Anne, Ra Anne Ramsamuj, have good morning, Palm Sunday. That is prayers for her husband, Ram Dinanath. He turned 70 today. I saw a picture of him. Big time uh, uh, Hawaiian shirt. 
It's a major Hawaiian shirt, which is everybody should get when you're 70, right? And so happy birthday. Debbie Trotter, happy for the whole family. Prayers for her, her facial injury she suffered a few weeks ago. Veronica Klein. Veronica, we know Veronica very well. Usually sits in row four there. And she says, happy Palm Sunday. Carol Wagner, good morning. And Annette Prasad, good morning. Julio, Julio, Julio Jordan, I want to say Julio Horton. Julio Jordan, for his, her dear mother-in-law, who passed away past Tuesday, Teresa Rosario in Puerto Rico. So Julio, we're with your whole family, especially your beautiful wife. Vashti Sumer says hi from Connecticut. Sita Chat Chatterpaul, good morning, Palm Sunday, for Blaine in Ontario, Canada. For Seema and Blaine in Ontario, Canada, as they law, law, uh, mourn the loss of their beloved husband and father, Robert Douglas Chadwick. For Virginia Antonetti, please pray for my kids and grandkids. Stuck in an extra one there. And then for our own folks here, uh, the loss of Yvette Welk, loss of Kevin, Kenneth, and, and uh, Eunice, Chris, who just, uh, his anniversary of death two years ago is this last week, and Hyacinth uh, Stanley's wife, who passed away 27 years ago. And prayers for Joycelyn from, uh, from Mohan, in memory of Renata and Richard Beck, and Reverend Rick Beck from Annette, and, and uh, Joe. In memory of John Isley, whose birthday would have been this week. And then we have prayers for the sick, Joanne, Robert, Celia, Thomas, Maria, Santito, Jesus, Daquana Webb, Keith Gregory, Mohan and family, Norman, uh, Preston, June Ryan, Marie Costello, Andrew Ryan, for healing for Elena Rosario, for the Bonilla, and for guidance for the Bonillas, the Andersons, Carolyn, the, the uh, Preston and Gillette families, for the Baragas family, McKay family, Bacari family, the Hino family, the Wells family, Stanley John and his family, Jeff and Julie and family, Jean Majors here this, here this morning, Jean and Leilani, as always, good to see you, Brenda and family and Valerie and family, and then for Joanne and Keith, the Blades family, Godfrey Barnwell, Maggie and family, Maggie with us this morning. I saw you over there, there you are. And for the Bascom and Towler families, for Leela and her family, Anne-Marie and Chris, one week old as husband and wife, for Verma and family, for guidance for the Ryan and Isley families, and thanks to God for John and Carol Lynn. And then birthdays, we have Miriam Majidi. Miriam's birthday is tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, birthday, and thanks for fellowship this morning. Yes, Miriam's in the other room. And Valerie Crane, whose birthday is on the 26th. All right. Is this, are you Valerie Crane? This is Valerie Crane. How about that? Happy birthday. All right, any others? Yes, Star. Yeah, for Annette. Your father passed? What was his name? Gil Gil? Gil. 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 85. 85, man. God bless. But we'll keep you in our prayers too as you mourn your dad's loss. And then especially for Annette Evanson. And I know we always think about uh, as well uh, Pam Cole, Diane Miller. I see her back there. Audrey Sharp, of course. That's from Diane. Okay, Barbara. Happy birthday, for Mrs. Twins. Not gonna say anything wrong. Happy birthday for the twins. <laughs> oh, for that family, that's a horrible thing. Over in Brooklyn, yeah. The, the, the one twin got killed, got stabbed, and the other one wounded. So for that family in bed, in bed stuy right near here. Yeah. Samaya, yeah. Okay. 
Maria, there you are. You're, you're out of your seat. You're not in your normal seat. Oh, yes. Jacqueline, the whole family, Clary, and Taffy and Dylan in the Navy. Amen. And welcome back. Yes, we had a long time of sickness. Andre. For everybody in the house. A prayer for everybody in the house. Never go wrong with that. Everyone in the house except the following three people. No. All included in the kingdom of God. Let's go for it. Okay, and the Chandradot family, as always. Nancy Cigara's mom. Ana Leon, who's, um, I love that lady. And then Darian Hines. Okay, and the rest of the shut-ins. June? Pam Cole. Pam Cole, okay. Here we go. Eileen? Where's Eileen? Eileen, how can you be stuck in the back row? When did that happen? Eileen had a birthday last week. There she goes. Okay. See, we have a way to find people no matter where they're sitting. Here we go. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. What a beautiful thing it is to be together. What a joy it is to understand that even as your son, our Lord Jesus, rode into Jerusalem, king for a day, that he took that journey and he rode on all the way to the cross and the empty tomb. That he did not think it robbery to be equal with God, but humbled himself unto death. We say those words, but we, we can't have any idea about that, what they really mean, about how he died for all, that those who live might live not unto themselves, but unto him who has rescued them. So thank you, Lord, for that truth today, for this assembly of saints, and for the way we have of simply honoring your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for a blessing upon all those who mourn the loss of loved ones for difficult situations in life and ask Heavenly Father that you would heal by the comfort that only you can supply through human beings who take care of one another, through the divine word that tells us we have a hope that lasts beyond our death, and through the sense that we have that we are carried along by your grace every moment we get to live. Lord, in your mercy, for those sick and suffering, Father. And there's so many here today that things on our mind, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, difficult uh, times. And we ask, first of all, that doctors and nurses in charge of those who are physically ill might be given exactly the right medicine, the right tools, the right hand of healing upon those for whom we pray. And then that for those of us who live with anxiety and difficult and depression and all other kinds of emotional and spiritual stress that you would strengthen us by this assembly of believers and by your word and by your holy meal that we might be strong in the Lord and in his strength be able to thank you for the healing you deliver to us Lord in your mercy thank you Lord for the gift of life for those celebrating birthdays for those wonderful events in our lives we ask that you would uh, give us give all those for whom we have prayed another year of blessing in your kingdom Keep them strong in you. May they have avenues and opportunities just open up in front of them uh, every single day that they might know your love, your peace, and your joy. Lord, in your mercy. For our church, Heavenly Father, we pray for a blessing in this holy week. But we ask you that this one body of Christ continue to be uh, given the tools, given the, the, the energy that we need spiritually to continue for the sake of our children and our children's children and our own innermost needs to be a strong congregation in the Lord. Bless us then as we reach out to our community and to the world. Give to world leaders in a time of great tempest and difficulty exactly the wisdom from on high that only you can provide. Bring us back from the edge and bring us into the middle, Heavenly Father, and give us a blessing of the meal in the fellowship hall this the, uh, later this morning, even as you're giving us the blessing of the meal here. In Jesus' name, amen. And we continue with our offerings and bring them to the Lord. Any additional folks needing seating? There are a couple seats left because the kids are out there in the hall. Very nice. 
This is a, a, a new thing now, a four plate offering. Very nice. God hears us when we pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have mercy on us, children of men. And given you only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may establish us in living faith, and prepare us joyful to remember our Redeemer, and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave it thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take any. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. At the same time, also he took the cup after supper. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink all of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often you drink it in remembrance of me. Behold, the Lamb who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say a word, and I shall be healed. At this moment, we'll be like to ask you to hold your um, hands together, as are appropriate, to sing our prayer of unity, the Lord's Prayer. 